A renewed call for school security after violence breaks out at Government High School Thursday. Hundreds show up to support their ratified candidates at the Progressive Liberal Party headquarters. That story is coming up straight ahead. Less than 100 days until Bahamar is set to open, hotel agreements have yet to be signed. The official New Year's Day Junkanoo Parade results are in and there are some big changes. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. I'm Christina McNeil. Topping news tonight, with the murder count continuing to rise to record heights so early in 2017, former Assistant Commissioner of Police Paul Thompson says the country is quickly turning into a war zone. The outspoken former senior officer says he doesn't see the issue getting better anytime soon. Jasmine Brown has the details. Thompson says it's obvious that gang warfare is causing the majority of the violence. However, he says police are still doing a tremendous job on clamping down on crime. With 11 murders recorded already for 2017, there are widespread concerns about crime. Well, you have um, a, a, a gang war going on, and um, we could expect this to continue until the police get the police forces responsible. Police Commissioner Allison Greenslade said earlier this week that the majority of murder victims are people involved in a life of crime. And despite the murder count hitting the double digits in the first few weeks of the year, the commissioner has said the Bahamas is not a bad place to live. Thompson agreed and insisted that the police are not to blame for the high murder rate. I think the police are on track. I think the police are doing good work in the country. I mean, anybody who would see what is happening daily with the number of cases heading to court, the prisons overcrowded, and the backlog we have, I mean, would know that the police is doing something. Thompson went on to say that murder is not an issue that can be solved overnight. In fact, he called it one of the hardest crimes to address. A murder is a very difficult crime uh, to prevent. In fact, the police schools I went to in the United States, in England, in Scotland, they would tell you, in fact, J. Edgar Hoover said it in one of his books, that murder is a, not a preventable crime. Thompson says while he believes it will get worse before it gets better, he also believes there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Right now we have a war zone, but um, I think the police can get to the bottom of it. I think some people are going to be killed. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. Thompson is also weighing in on a violent schoolyard brawl that left a government high school student with serious stab wounds. He says while violence in public schools is nothing new, it needs to be seriously addressed considering all the past initiatives have seemingly failed. Thompson says the solution is getting private security involved. Thompson, who now works in a private security firm, says several years ago he had the opportunity to work with the Ministry of Education school security unit. We, we did a proposal which would have put private security in the school, but the people would have been, they would have had a criteria, and one of it was physical fitness. The other thing was we, um, apart from that, we wanted an intelligence unit established between the security, the teachers, the principal, and some of the selected students so that information would come in of students who are likely to cause problems and at least you could call them and talk to them. Thompson says he's not advocating for police officers to be removed from the schools but he is saying security needs to be beefed up. I put people who cannot walk around I mean patrol properly, patrol the grounds properly. You can't have them in security. They're not there just to sit at the gate. They have to patrol and see what's happening. Well, the recent decrease in serious crimes, rising conviction rates, and speed of trials shows the Bahamas is moving in the right direction. That according to Prime Minister Perry Christie, who Thursday opened the new office of the public defender at Bay Street and Victoria Avenue. 
This comes on the heels of the release of crime statistics for 2016, which show that overall crime was down 26% over 2015, the most significant overall decrease in crime in the Bahamas since 2004. On Thursday, Christie told reporters that we cannot rely on the fear of punishment to keep communities safe. Rather, he says, security depends on investments in infrastructure, crime prevention, rehabilitation, and the continued strengthening of the justice system. Those investments include taking a multifaceted approach to the fight against crime while providing equal access to justice. The Public Defender's Office will ensure that attorneys are provided for defendants who cannot afford to hire their own. That move is expected to reduce the criminal case backlog and save the Bahamian people thousands of dollars in the administration of justice. Well, with four days left until the Progressive Liberal Party National Convention, the party ratified 16 candidates last night. The majority of candidates are familiar faces, however, party leader Prime Minister Perry Christie believes a handful of newcomers will secure their seats for the PLP. Georgie O'Bain reports. A sea of gold flooded the Progressive Liberal Party headquarters as supporters came from near and far to support their ratified candidate, supporting the notion that the Progressive Liberal Party is coming to take the 2017 general election. There was a huge turnout at the PLP headquarters as the PLP ratified Prime Minister Perry Christie for Centerville, a seat that he has held for nearly 40 years, making the PM the longest serving living member of parliament. We are grateful that you have come to demonstrate to the people of New Providence and to the rest of the Bahamas that we are going to win West End and Liberty. We are going to win Pine Ridge. We are going to win East Grand Bahama. We are going to win Macro City. And when we get around to Central Grand Bahama, we are going to win that too. Deputy Prime Minister Philip Davis was ratified for the Cat Island, Rub Key, and San Salvador constituency, the seat he currently holds. We cannot win unless each and every one of you go out there and register the vote. Not just you. I want to take your mother, your father, your daughter, and your sons. Take your employee and get them registered. Because ain't no use coming up here dancing with us and talking with us. If you can go on that day and mark the X for one of us. The Minister of National Security, Dr. Bernard Nodick, was ratified for his current seat of Bain and Grants Town and continued his message that Bahamians must register to vote. And the only way you can be ready is if you are registered. Now, let me ask you, let me see your hand if you're registered. Put your hands down. You're lying to me. I mean, the ones who really registered. Put your hand. Let me try in the back here. Who's registered in the back here? <laughs> Listen, if you turn up to vote, we cannot lose. Tourism Minister Obi Wilchcom was ratified for his current seat of West Grand Bahama and Bimini. Minister of Agriculture and Marine Resources V. Alfred Gray was ratified for his seat of Mike Howe. Minister of Transport and Aviation Glennis Hannah Martin was ratified for her current seat of Angliston. Minister of Labor and National Insurance Shane Gibson was ratified for his current seat in Golden Gates constituency and says the PLP is not about him but about the beliefs of the people. They talk, 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 talk. They talk too much. Minister of Health Dr. Perry Gomez was ratified for his current seat of the North Andrews and Barry Allen's constituency. Piceville Forbes was ratified for the South Andrews constituency, a seat he currently holds. Minister of State for Investment in the office of the Prime Minister, Kalis Rule, was ratified for his highly contested Pinewood seat that he currently holds. Dr. Michael Darvel was ratified for the seat he currently holds in Pine Ridge. 
And then there were the newer faces. Senator Alex Storr was ratified for the Elizabeth constituency, a seat currently held by PLP MP Ryan Pinder. As I move about the constituency speaking to you, I not only hear your concerns, I share your concerns. Whether it's the danger posed by your line coastline during storm surges, jobs and opportunities for the young men and women, the provision of community facilities and proper upkeeps of parks and bridges, I hear you loud and clear. And I'm here to tell you, you can be sure without store. Political newcomer Renika Knowles will challenge Free National Movement leader Dr. Hubert Minnis for the Kalani seat. Former FNM candidate Nora Spain will now run on the PLP ticket for the Marco City constituency with the slogan, Bain feels your pain. Bain says it's good to be back to the PLP. Land slam strong, cyclists, and more importantly, cancer survivor said when you get a second chance to do something, do it with all your might. To the people of Marco City tonight, I want to let you know that I'm going to do this with all my might. Preston Cooper was ratified for the East Grand Bahama seat. Businessman Clay Sweeting will run for the North Eleuther seat again after facing defeat in 2012. Last night's ratification brings the total number of ratified candidates to 33. Reporting for our news, I'm Georgia Bain. Still to come on our news, when we can expect Bahamar hotel operator agreements to be finalized. The University of the Bahamas researchers take a closer look at the root of school violence. And a breast cancer initiative provides support for those affected by breast cancer. That's coming up when our news returns.